welcome back amazing cj farm you know the drill guys you know how we do it on this channel hit on the like button drop your thoughts your ideas or your suggestions down in the comment section below and if you're a newbie on the channel come on you know what to do hit on the subscribe button like this video to be part of this amazing family in today's tutorial we're going to be learning how to make this beautiful and awesome kimono ankara jacket if this sounds like what you like to learn then keep on watching i've already marked the horizontal line which i'm going to be explaining now so the first line is from the shoulder to the breast point which is nine inches after that i mark from the shoulder to the half length which is 15 then shoulder to hip line which is about 24 inches then from the shoulder to the length of the kimono after the length i added extra four inches that i'm going to be using to fold in the lining after marking each of the lines what i'm going to be doing next is i'm going to be going upwards on the breast point by two inches then i'm going to be extending the line horizontally to serve as the armhole the next thing I'm going to be doing is to mark the opening for the front kimono. So I'm marking 2 inches from the upper point towards the lower hemline. So I'll mark 2 inches as well. On the breast point, I'll mark 2 inches. On the hip line, I'll mark 2 inches. On the length of the kimono, I'll mark 2 inches until I get to the lower hemline. This will be the line that will serve as the opening for the front kimono, so we'll be able to put on the kimono easily. So after marking the two inches, as you can see, the next thing we're going to be doing now is that we're going to be connecting the lines vertically as shown. I'm using my pattern master to connect the lines. Please bear with me if you can't see this properly because I made use of a blue chalk and the fabric is actually blue so I'm going to try as much as possible to make it visible. After that I'm going to be marking my shoulder point which is actually 7.5 inches. After marking the shoulder width. So now on the shoulder point, I'm going to be coming down by half of an inch. Then I'm going to be connecting it in a slanty form towards the neck point. So after doing that, I'm going to be marking my neckline, which the width is actually three and a half inches in width. Then the depth is actually three and a half inches also. So I'm going to be connecting the vertical and the horizontal lines together as displayed. So after connecting it together, I'm going to be connecting the two lines with a curve towards the inner point as shown. I'm going to use my pattern master to blend in the curve. After doing that, the next thing I'm going to be doing now is to mark the back neckline, which I'm going to be coming down by one and a half inch. The first line we marked was for the front neckline. So after doing that, I'm going to be connecting from my shoulder point down to the armhole point with a straight line. Then diagonally, I'm going to go in by one inch and then blend in with a curve. After that, I'm going to be coming down by 4 inches, which is the midpoint. Then I went in by 0.75 inch and then connected it with a curve towards the armhole. This will serve as our front armhole. The front armhole is supposed to be deeper than the back.
So after connecting the armhole, the next thing is to insert our horizontal measurement. The first step is to insert our bust measurement, which is our bust divided by 4 inches plus 2 inch allowance. Bust divided by 4 plus 2 inches allowance as shown. Then I'm going to mark it. Mind you, I'm not going to be inserting a dart, so there will be no need to add an extra allowance. After that, I'm going to be marking half length measurement round waist divided by 4 plus 2 inches. After doing that, I'm going to be marking each point as shown. Mind you, I said round waist divided by 4 plus 2 inches allowance, 1 inch for swing and 1 inch for ease. So now on the hip line, I'm going to be dividing my hip divided by 4, round hip divided by 4 plus 2 inches. The 2 inches you're marking is that 1 inch will serve as our swing allowance as well as 1 inch will serve for ease because I don't want the jacket to be too tight on my client. So after doing that, I'm going to be connecting the lines as shown. If you don't have a pattern master, you can actually use your free hand to do this carefully. Then after connecting the curve on the hip line towards the shoulder point and the waistline, I'm going to be making a straight line from the hip line since it's not a pencil gown so from the hip line i'm just going to be going down straight so after marking it the next step will be to cut So I'm cutting from the hemline towards the sides, then to the armhole. So after cutting it, here we have the front and the back. So I'm going to be cutting the back neckline first. After cutting the back neckline, we're going to be trimming the shoulder, the shoulder slant that we made. Before then, we're going to be separating the back from the front. Then, we're going to be placing it together to trim the shoulder point. After placing the back and the front together, now we're going to trim the shoulder point. That slant we made earlier. So after slanting it, this is how it looks. The next thing we're going to be doing now is to trim just the front neckline. Mind you, we're not touching the back neckline because the front neckline is actually supposed to be deeper than the back. Then we are going to be trimming that 2 inches that we marked. The 2 inches that we marked is only for the front. Mind you, you don't have to touch the back. The back is supposed to be closed and it's supposed to be a single piece. While the front is supposed to have an opening and it's supposed to be two pieces. So after cutting the front, You can see what we have here if you know you've not subscribed to the channel and you've gotten to this point please do well to subscribe to the channel like this video and drop your thoughts ideas or your suggestion down in the comment section below remember earlier when I said the front armhole is supposed to be deeper than the back so I'm going to be trimming the front armhole that we marked earlier on by that 0.75 inches so we can see the difference between the front and the back armhole. 
after cutting it this is how it looks our front kimono is ready now we are going to be cutting the sleeves if you look from the thumbnail you can see that the sleeve is actually a flesh sleeve and i made use of a two inches ankara fabric which i made for the body of the kimono i made use of one and a half inch so now i don't know if this half inch is going to be enough but let's see how we're going to work with this so i folded the material into two then folded it into two again but the way it's going now it seems as though it's not going to be enough so i'm going to find a way that i'm going to make it happen so please stick with me and let's discover this together after folding the fabric into four we can see that the material is actually shortened we are unable to get the actual length and the width so i'm thinking of another way i can achieve this I think I figured it out now. I think I figured it out now. So I'm going to be opening the fabric again. So now I folded the fabric into two. Then I folded it into two again, making it four. Now I'm going to be slanting it in form of an. I'm going to be slanting it in form of a triangle, as you can see. So you can see that the lower length is not equal to the other part. What I'm going to be doing now is I'm going to be making use of the armhole measurement. I'll divide the armhole measurement by four to get the part for the cone. So after dividing it, I'm going to be imputing the number I got on the upper part. Either you do your armhole divided by 4 or you do your armhole divided by 6.28 to get the measurement for the cone part. Then after that, I'm going to be inserting the length of the sleeve, which mine is actually 13 inches, plus 1 inch for folding allowance, making it 14 inches. So I'm going to be marking the length horizontally as shown, I mean vertically. So from that cone part towards the lower hem, the length is 4 inches. I meant 14 inches, sorry. So I'm placing the fabric very well so I'll be able to get the right measurement. So after cutting the measurement I got on the upper point, now I'm going to be inserting the length of the sleeve. So now the length is 14 inches plus the folding allowance which is 1 inch. So after marking it as shown, make sure to place your tape as if you want to cut a cone. Place your tape in a slanty manner. After marking each measurement, then I cut the fabric. At the end of the cutting, you can see that we have a 360 flare. But since the fabric is not enough, I'm going to be dividing it into two. If we divide it into two, then it's going to be 180 each. So we're going to be opening just one point to get the sleeve for both of the armhole. 
so after cutting it this is how the sleeve looks and we have gotten our two sleeves so next week i'm going to be uploading the one for the sewing tutorial do well to stay tuned and if you've not subscribed please do that until i come your way next saturday bye guys